Yo, welcome to the Creative Mastermind Show. I'm Jordan. And I'm Pavel. Today we're talking about why community matters. Perfect. So in today's episode, you're going to learn about what it's like to be at a fantastic art atelier surrounded by great peers. Conversely, we're going to tell you about the dangers of isolation, as well as the pitfalls of a great art community. And then towards the end, we're going to give you some great tips on how to meet like-minded people. All right, let's get into it. The reason why I became seven feet tall and a basketball superstar is because of the importance of community. And what I can say is growing up, well, I grew up in Russia, but moving to Canada and studying first in Canada, we didn't have a great art community here. So I felt like I didn't really know much about the level of artistic ability in the world. So when you don't know anything, you tend to feel too good about yourself and your own art. Uh, so when I arrived to Watts Atelier and met you, I feel like we had a rude awakening. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I got it before that, like just on the internet. <laughs> Like when when you're when you're in like the traditional art school, uh, I know you didn't go to art school, but I did. And you know when you're there, there's a certain level of what you think is good. So I, I went to Sheridan in Oakville, uh, Ontario, Canada, and it's it's not a bad program for Canada, right? And the the top tier echelon is the animation program. It's actually like a pretty internationally renowned animation program. That being said. You know, it's still a diploma program for art, which uh, I know we both kind of have opinions on. But yeah, we would always look to the animation students. We're like, wow, that's amazing. That's the pinnacle, right? And <laughs> the like, Disney, <laughs> yeah, Disney but, animation I mean, they, level. Yeah, they, they had some things that they actually were quite good at, like life drawing. And I, I, I would probably say, I haven't seen them recently, but they're pretty high quality. Like they weren't crazy rendered life drawings, but they were like, you know, 15 minutes and they really captured every essence of the pose, right? So just even by looking at those guys, I felt like I had a cool target for my life drawings, right? But it wasn't until, you know, I went online and I searched like a uh, school like Watts, right? Which we both went to, that's where we met. Um, till I was like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? How is this even possible? Yeah, uh, that, that's how it was for me where I knew high level of art was possible as a professional artist, but I didn't know that students could get that good. So I remember feeling very shocked. Uh, before that, I haven't spoken to any artists. I was completely isolated. It's just my own art was, and the art I saw online on uh, art forums. Yeah, but so then, let's, let's talk about that. That's like m most people I talk to, that's their first art community is... Art forms, right? Yeah, For us, back it was in concept the day. Art .org. Yeah, when right? when we were teenagers, <laughs> uh, I guess our only art community, because I went to business school and I studied business, so literally my only art community was on the art forums. Definitely not nobody in person, and uh, there was some professionals there, of course. So they showed a good level of uh, illustration, and they really helped me out. And I have to give it to them. If not for them. I'd have literally no clue until I went to an atelier. Yeah, uh, so those, the, those are really something, man. Uh, yeah, they're gone now, and I feel like uh, I don't think there's a way to get feedback for free of that level anymore. Like mm -hmm. back then, I remember there were these paint over threads where the community looked at your painting, and then it did uh, digital paint overs. Yeah. And this is super valuable for a teenager in Canada with uh, no access to professionals physically. Yeah. Uh, this really helped us out, I feel like. Yeah, and there's there's a few aspects to that that are really rocking, I think, is one, I, I feel like in the days of conceptart.org, like, what made it good was, like, there was good people that inhabited the forms. People who were, like, quite professional, who were there to be part of the community because it was so... A fun and there's a lot of value that they were just open to giving back right like there was high level people doing paint overs willing to share right so that's one big part of value and then two was uh since everyone was there and they're so invested in the community that they stick around and you got to see these guys right go from like total noob can't draw like looks like he's drawing with his left hand and he's 10 years old to being like 
a professional, right? Like if you think of like what uh, was it, Mind Candy Man or something? You remember that guy's thread? Well, there was a couple of threads, not that long, where somebody went from literally like stick, like not basically stick figure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fumel or something. I'm messing up his name, but it was okay. a, a young guy. He went really hard on these forums, and you can see as the sketchbook thread grows, he actually becomes. Yeah really impressive Tem Met was one do you guys remember you remember that guy no Tem Met? okay oh. I, can't, I don't remember if he started off as like a complete noob but like he definitely like leveled up and that's very cool to see uh because you're seeing a person like you get better and better pretty fast too to be honest so it, it gives you an example that you can grow and you can grow fast and if you've never seen that then it may never happen and it's very important to see other people accomplish something to give yourself an understanding that you can do it too for example we all know the whole self-development thing where people couldn't run a mile under a certain mm -hmm. amount of time mm -hmm. i'm not going to say the time because i don't remember it but let's say they couldn't run a mile under five minutes or something uh one guy did it i think in the 40s and scientists back then would say we don't believe it's <laughs> physically possible yeah, for yeah. the human tissues to carry out this feat uh one guy did it and now after him the next year a bunch more people did it and now suddenly we're at a point where uh, a fairly normal high school student beats that speed so this just goes to show that what we see in our environment the, the levels that we see in our environment go on to affect our beliefs about what's possible and our execution of that. Yeah, that's so great and so real in my opinion and I guess objectively uh, science opinion as well. But um, no, I, I heard this quote and I can't remember where it was from, but it kind of went along the lines of people won't dream for what they don't think they can ever have. I don't know if you heard that one. And that's so true because like if you don't know what the limit is, like it takes a lot of creativity to just uh, make up new limits, right? So when you when you see someone else doing it, uh, it takes kind of all the hard work out of making that new limit. And you could just say like, if he's doing it, I can do it. You know, I guess you need you first you need the mindset to kind of be that uh, ambitious about yourself. But once you say like, what makes this guy so special? Girl, I can do it too. I'll show him, right? Um, but before we leave the kind of form topic, there's one thing I did want to mention is. Uh, you, you saw the superstars, but you also saw like the, the excuse makers, right? Like, I don't know. I remember going into these certain threads cause I, I guess I would just browse a form for days. And I guess I was one of those guys for a while where you, they would make a sketchbook thread and then they would like update it with posts about words and no images. And that was a big no-no. I don't know if you remember that. Like, so they would kind of write something and then people were like, where's your art, bro? And then they, they would make another response like, uh, like with an excuse. So their thread would keep getting bumped to the top. And then they would get people commenting on the first one. So they get the validation from the first couple posts without having to make new art. And those are the guys that like, you know, they're not going anywhere. Like you see them like making the defense, like they got the, the Kung Fu for like all the excuses why they're not posting new art. And you know, like, like the longevity of these uh, other threads, you, you see the reverse, the, the the brevity of these kind of, uh, you know, excuse masters who they're not leveling up. They don't have the long term success. So you see the you see the consequences of being a bullshitter and you see the, the reward of being consistent. Yeah, that's a, an important part of communities. You see various people with various approaches to their journey in art and in life. And you see how those journeys are turning out <laughs> and uh, you find certain patterns uh, yeah. that become apparent, which students went on to become professionals, which ones didn't. And then you can kind of see what are some common links and yeah. then you can find the pattern. Um, so with that said, what is really important is getting yourself to a place where you're surrounded by like-minded people yeah. that want to push it to a really high level. So. For us, it was an art atelier that was well above any level we've seen in Canada. Mm -hmm. So that's when my art grew fast. Uh, and yeah, we just... both did. We both did, right? We yeah. both did six months there originally. And uh, I, I think you leveled up a lot. And uh, oh, man, me too. Like, I, I, you know, I still have people that um, 
uh, I was very close with before I left, and they openly admit to my face, like, you know, before you left, like, you cut, you sucked. <laughs> but after, after you after you got back, you got good, right? You suck. I was like, I was like, yeah, wow, way to say I sucked. I thought you believed in me. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I just I kind of where I think we should take this is like online communities versus real life communities too. Like, so we talked about upping your standard so you get that we got that online and you know when we went to watts where you know the teachers are fucking awesome right mm -hmm. and you see the student work too you're like what right but we're also talking about going from the you know kind of more ethereal land of the internet to actually being there you know seeing you know jeff watts eric just um lucas graciano in person you see that they're just regular people and you see there's also students there who flew in from around the world and they're hustling. So what is, what's like the kind of uh, differences and importance of being in person versus online? In person, you see it happen in front of your own face, which I think makes your brain believe in it more. Mm -hmm. Like when somebody's online and let's say they're posting great work, uh, they feel like more closer to a fiction character. Yeah. And then when you see these demos being executed in front of you, yeah. Now it really becomes a lot more real. And I think that's especially strong. Like, uh, for me, the influence of the community was in some ways more important with the fantastic students rather more than the teachers because the teachers yeah. are kind of superheroes anyway. So, yeah, but they, they do become real superheroes. Like you see that, like, you know, maybe the teacher that you look up to has a few personality quirks that like, you're like, oh, it's kind of interesting. Like, yeah. you know, they're. They're just a guy. Yeah, they struggle with really, stuff really too. But what's really helpful is to find peers and other students that are really good and really pushing themselves. Because right. you, uh, you don't re uh, when you're beginning to be a student, uh, when you're starting out, you don't relate yourself to the teacher as much as to other students. Yeah. So when you see another student, like uh, I was uh, really liking Glenn's work. Remember Glenn? Yeah, that guy was a monster. Uh, he was very. I hope he's, I hope he's doing okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope he, so. he probably is. I don't know. Uh, hey, Glenn, if you're still alive, hey, say Glenn, hello. We miss you. Uh, but I remember he inspired me uh, in many ways more than the teachers because he was younger than both of us. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's supposed to be very relatable. Uh, he, he took away our excuses by one, being younger, being a peer. Yeah. Um, he did, doesn't have artist parents or anything like that. Nope. So seeing a student who's in your position... And even worse because he's younger do really well that was th that hits you very hard and that's something you you really got to experience so that's why wherever you choose to study you got to make sure that the students not only the teachers are at a high level but the students are at a very high level yeah i i think yeah i remember just seeing glenn dude and then like he's he's sitting in the front row and like i'm sitting behind it and I'm, like i look at his drawing and i'm like like there's something about his drawings that reminded me of Jeff Watts in a way. Like, obviously, he's, he's like, way less experienced and he's still a student and, like, a fraction of the age, right? But, like, in terms of, like, the, like, raw, I guess, charisma or, like, perspective in his drawings were, like, I was, like, I felt something looking at them. And I look at my drawings and I just kind of, like, I think one time I was sitting behind him and I, like, tried to copy the shapes he designed. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I think that was, like, one of the best drawings I did at that time. And everyone was, like, complimenting it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good. No, uh, but that, that guy definitely inspired me to, like, push forward in especially what he was crushing it at. Like, I saw him crush at that specific thing. Like, very good motion, perspective in his figures. Like, and I was like, why can't I do that? Yeah, and look at that situation. You've surrounded yourself with fantastic peers but what if you're back in canada at a session uh a lot of us that went to that atelier were probably the best in our environment back home yeah so in our environment let's say we're gonna do a drawing the feedback we're gonna get is wow you're so good wow, wow. <laughs> um thanks mom yeah <laughs> thanks grandma uh and you can't do much with that except have good feelings and then when you get to a very high level place you're gonna see people better than you and now you have that chance to learn from them yeah because uh, you can't do much with that positive uh feedback uh, it's, it's very dangerous especially when you suck and you got all these <laughs> non-artists uh or lesser artists telling you that you're good yeah. 
you're really shooting yourself in the foot. You got to get to a place where you're the worst. Like uh, on all these uh, self development podcasts, you hear get your if you're the smartest person in the room, get out of that room. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so obviously, do that with your art as well as oh, with yeah, your yeah. career some and people, everything. Some people could be so deep in that and get like such a ego. I mean, I, we all have egos about our art. Like, I don't know. I don't know anyone who doesn't to any degree, anyway. But uh, yeah, I think people could just fall into that trap and when they get buried so deep of just believing like they're the shit they're a magical uh art prince or princess oh that's what i thought i was until i got to that well, like, i mean you got just... out of it but some people never do and oh i could still be in it i don't know i like to think i'm not but uh yeah when people are in isolation they run the danger of that uh so yeah. if you're not exposing yourself to the best stuff in the world you're just shooting yourself in the foot and another thing that you're missing out on i think that's very important with an art community is the level of competition that you have with the other students i'm yeah. a very competitive yeah. aggressive person so i really relied on that yeah that's no that's a great point is yeah the competitive drive right you see someone like they're staying up late like i remember so we did the platinum pass at watts which i think ended up being if you counted the the weekend sessions it was like 50 to 60 hours oh uh, it was 16 class. classes and two workshops yeah so it's 18 three hour yeah periods in one week it was yeah. crazy so i remember i remember again i guess now that we kind of have had some pretty extreme professional work weeks it's not like totally crazy but i think for me at that time i was like this is so much i love it but it hurts mm -hmm. but i remember i remember coming back to uh the apartment we were staying at nick's apartment we yeah. were kind of like this like weird like dormitory of uh i guess <laughs> foreigners in america yeah, a lot of great people stayed in there. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was very interesting. But I remember uh, you in particular would go back and, you know, you'd be like working on finishing your drawings, which, you know, you always do. And I'd be kind of like, I'm done for the day. And then I see you sitting there, like working on your thing. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so I'm not done. <laughs> oh, no, no, I have to do it. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you, it's easier to feel that way when you see students better than you. You're like, well, I can rest or I can think about how this younger kid <laughs> is crushing me. Yeah. So maybe I can't rest. And that's yeah. very important. Uh, you know, the competitive spirit is something that I admire in athletics a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't watch sports. It's really not for me. But I love that it's out in the open, the competitiveness. Yeah it's allowed in their culture it's encouraged mm -hmm. i think this art community in general would gain from a lot more aggression and competition it kind of reminds me of that kendrick lamar uh, verse in control mm -hmm. where he calls out all the rappers that he's coming for him and it's not to diss them but it's to push the game forward that's very important uh yeah i, I think that's true but there is a competition if you look at level up type communities like the more like i guess entertainment i can't speak for the fine art world because i'm not as uh, immersed in that as you but i know in the entertainment type communities there is a lot of uh, it's competition but it's like competition it can get kind of unhealthy there's kind of like i can do this better you know so it's kind of like you're 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 more like flaunting about how uh i guess you could execute on this one specific subject matter and like people will iterate on it over and over and over again. And uh, I don't know, I think sometimes it comes at a detriment. Is I guess it's kind of a bit hard to explain. Why, why is it a detriment if uh, somebody is executing better than they deserve to flaunt it? There's nothing wrong with flaunting it. If you got something to flaunt, then flaunt it. Uh... Nothing yeah. bad about that. But I think it can kind of turn into uh, like an unhealthy obsession about like meeting this certain standard. But if that's not your standard, like a community senses of standard, which I guess can kind of be the dark side of like the whole community thing is, you know, if there is this kind of like dogma that everyone is following and it's not really your path. And again, uh, we can decide, you know, we could debate if what your path should be. But, you know, I think that really comes down to the person. But if the dogma is such one way and you're not following the dogma um i think a lot of people feel pressured to follow the dogma and i end up kind of unhappy you, about you, that you mean kind of like how different ateliers have some different approaches to drawing and painting 
uh, their philosophy is a little bit different. So the students get influenced in a, in specific directions. Yeah, that's a great uh, point. Too. Like that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. You got to watch out for that. On one hand, you're in a great community with high level people, but you have to look at what philosophy does your atelier have compared to other ateliers and you have to place it correctly in the family tree of the other ones and ask yeah. yourself do i necessarily resonate with this yeah yeah i mean i think this this is kind of it comes down to this idea of you know what is your mission where do you want to go what is your vision for yourself and does this training uh fit into it right yeah do like, the people around you help you to get there yeah, or not totally like taking what is the best from each i think that's important taking the best from each and uh you know just kind of letting the stuff that you don't necessarily resonate with kind of sit there uh yes and to find out what stuff you should leave uh i think when you're younger and you're starting out to be a student it's great to take on a lot of influences and hear a lot of different opinions yeah I think it's the only way because uh, I can tell you before I went to Watts my only influence was the online community mm -hmm. the art, online art community and it was more in the entertainment industry so I just assumed that I want to be a magic the gathering yeah. card illustrator because that's what I yeah, saw dude. on Facebook I just wanted to be a concept artist um, yeah because I didn't even know my community didn't involve other views like I didn't see other opinions yeah. so when I got to the atelier I saw they have uh, very strong illustrators, but they also have some fine art influence there too. Mm -hmm. So I was exposed to fine art for the first time. Yep. Uh, and that really helped me. But what if it was different? What if it was an illustration only school? I would have never discovered it. Yeah. So I think, yeah, the, the matter of custom tailoring the fit to your situation is so important. So I think that's a great transition into the last thing uh, I think we should talk about is, so you've been in the school, right? You took what you wanted and now you're out of school right now you're uh you got to go back you you know you, you got to go back to your hometown or ideally you move to kind of like a hub around you like a art hub but you know you're kind of on your own like what should we should how should we aim to keep that sense of community because i think we've just identified how important it really is right in these first stages like the online community the kind of global community the the learning community but how do we how do we keep the community going once we leave these kind of wonderful nests yeah, that's been a challenge when you go out on your own and uh, start off your professional career without the guidance and mentorship of these teachers, it can get tough, especially if you go back to live in a place that's very yeah. low level. Yeah, uh, like where we are right now, in Montreal, I think is uh, sucks for this personally. Right. Uh, it's good if you're in entertainment. Uh, yeah, I, I think yes. Uh, actually, for the video game industry, it's very strong. But for fine art, uh, it's a it's a shit community my opinion um, <laughs> so that becomes a challenge so you gotta find and work really hard those few key people that know those levels that you've seen that have been to those places and like those same yeah. influences that you like and yeah. you got to stick with them yeah nab them when you're in school I think right like that's that's what I've done like I met you there I met a few other peers that like really resonated with me and I'm like I'm gonna ride or die with these guys right like I'm keeping them in mm -hmm. my you know inner circle of influence because you know I, I might not find them you know wherever I go back to right and yeah it's super important but so how do we how do we meet new people once we're out of this right because we got the good ones we got you know we made the connections with the teachers account we made the connection with the peers account you know they still might not be with us wherever we're going back so what's what do you think are some good approaches for meeting people around you well I've had some luck with what I've done after the atelier is I've taken a few workshops with painters that I want to paint like, like yeah. uh, Lipking and Todorovich. And I've gotten influenced by them and I've met people, uh, like-minded people on these workshops. Yeah. So then you can make a connection kind of online and then you run, you may run into them at future workshops. Yeah. So it was, it was great to meet a lot of really high level artists like at the last uh, workshop i won a scholarship to arizona for a joseph storage workshop mm -hmm. met a bunch of cool artists there uh like natalia fabia for for example mm -hmm. very high level artist so 
going to these events i'm probably going to art shows like there's a richard schmidt tribute show coming up oh um, can't wait yeah i might not be able to go but <laughs> i'm sure that's a fantastic place to meet yeah. amazing people so you gotta make your way there you gotta to, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm talking to myself but i got a wedding to go to that weekend so it's tough but uh it's worth your time your financial investment and your time and west investment yeah. to get to these places to meet those people that are there yeah um i i should talk about some kind of experiences i had because uh, i'm from toronto and there's a there's a good art community there but it's if you didn't go to the right places uh so a lot of the the, the entertainment industry in toronto is uh postgraduate animation or uh, I think there's like a school Max the Mutt. I, I don't really know, but there, there's uh, existing cliques that already exist, right? So for me, it's like, how do I get to know these people? And uh, what, one of the better ways, well, I didn't even know they existed to begin with. It wasn't until I went to the, uh, I think, Edge Control Workshop, where uh, you're there for two days, maybe on the weekend. And it's just lectures. You're not actually doing any kind of executing on painting, which, uh, you know, it's not really good for learning, in my opinion. I don't know. But what you do is you get to hang out with these people who love art, who are actually in your community, right? These guys are Toronto-based artists. And, you know, I, I didn't resonate with everyone, but I did get to meet a few people that were uh, pretty freaking cool. And I also got to renew some bonds with, uh, I got another friend, his name's uh, John Anthony. I think we only see each other at like workshops, basically. <laughs> or like workshop bros. He lives in Guelph, so it's not even that far away. But, uh, you know, when we do see each other, like that's the kind of guy I really connect with, right? Mm -hmm. And so it is kind of about going to these like, big community events and yeah just i don't know getting yourself out there you know like you're gonna meet a lot of people and there's gonna be maybe like a couple that you really resonate with and i think another way has been uh just reaching out to people online and like try like trying to not be creepy about it but i like objectively it might be a little creepy just being like you see they're from where you are you see that they're a cool artist and like they're kind of giving off that vibe that you connect with like just send them a message man like people like artists are really open people yeah i mean you can even send messages to your influences and people that you thought are too big for you or something like that like um i've been messaging uh proco and uh i just asked one day why don't we do a collab video together which you know you'd be surprised i don't have as many followers as him but he said yes so we're working on that now and that's I guess he's now part of my online community, so to speak. So my advice to people would be, don't be afraid to get in contact with and work with and level with people that are quite up there in the industry that are known that you respect a lot. Uh, the mindset of your circle really matters. Is your circle feel like they're lowly students do they have limiting beliefs about yeah. being successful yeah. in art or are they or is this the winner's circle so yeah. if it's not the winner's circle just put yourself in the winner's mm -hmm. circle immediately yeah that's great so i think that's a perfect place to end it so if we can recap i think it was let's say mm -hmm. online community is super important right we're getting great examples of all stars crushing it and we're seeing also what not to do um online or sorry in-person learning is super important like getting yourself if you're just starting out and you you need to be like an information sponge like in person it's just the way to do it right like go to the right place you know make the commitment even if it takes a long time for you to get the kind of resources and time off to go there do do it you have to it's going to help you out so much um next is what do you do beyond that right yeah How do when you continue you're at a higher level yeah. after that's when you start to become very particular about who you pick for your influences, for your circle. And for that, our advice is to reach higher. You're not a student anymore. This is some real shit now. You're a professional now. Shit so. got real! It did. So act that way and connect yourself with the best people you could think about. Don't be afraid to reach out to them. Just Maybe they like your work Just too. Just do it. I know I've been surprised that a lot of these people that I look up to, they answer their messages. They want to work with you sometimes. It's awesome. Yeah, perfectly said. So that's going to end it. Thanks for listening, guys. And until next time. So we hope this episode inspired you to expand your network and go out and meet the artists that you need to be meeting.
so you won't be alone for the first time in your life. <laughs> I know you guys enjoyed this episode, so subscribe to us on iTunes, Instagram, and YouTube right now. Do it. You Do have it. to. Because we asked you, so you have to know. Please. Please. <laughs>